here at the city, we are continuing to intensely monitor the situation and collaborate with our area partners to make sure Duval County is ready to respond. Our teams have been meeting and planning since January. We have the policy and plans in place to respond. I want to start, start out with an update of a story that many of you reported on this morning, that we had four Jacksonville Fire and Rescue personnel that were being isolated because of exposure to COVID-19. The good news is that the epidemiologist at the State Department of Health has cleared those four JFRD personnel uh, to return to work. So uh, that's good news. It's also a reminder. Uh, you know, yesterday when I was out uh, elbow bumping people, I would see people shaking hands and they have a level of comfort shaking hands with people, well, I know that person. You may know them very well. They may be your best friend, they may be your cousin. That doesn't mean they could not, they could not have potentially been in a place that was exposed. So remember, please don't shake hands. Currently, there are no confirmed cases of coronavirus in Duval County. I'm, I committed to you last week that if and when uh, we get a positive diagnosis, we will share it with you so the people of Duval County know. I had a call this morning with the administrators of local hospitals to see how the city can assist them in their efforts to prepare to respond to COVID-19. To help reduce the risk of spreading the disease and person-to-person -person contact, virtual care is a very safe and convenient option for patients with non-emergency needs. You can access virtual care 24-7 with a smartphone or a mobile device, a laptop, or a tablet. While a diagnosis of COVID-19 can't be confirmed via virtual care, this is an effective way to screen patients to determine next steps. If you don't have access to virtual care, call your primary care provider or the Department of Health at 904-253-1850. That's 904-253-1850 to describe your symptoms and determine the next step. Do not show up at a doctor's office or clinic or an emergency room without first contacting your doctor's office. This is for a number of reasons, including not unnecessarily stressing our hospitals and clinics as we could potentially have cases that will be need to dealt with. As an additional FYI for the safety of patients and colleagues, Memorial Hospital is limiting the number of entrances available to patients and visitors. This is an effort to screen all individuals that come into the hospital. At this time, the city and our partners are putting plans and preparations in motions to mitigate and respond to the potential effects of this disease. Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department has added additional screening questions at the 911 call center to better identify potential cases. And Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department crews have protective equipment for first responders and patients in place to minimize the spread of this virus. We issued guidance to city employees today recommending they immediately stop travel to CDC identified level three risk zones and limit all non-essential travel. We're working with local partners, including local shelters and service providers for the homeless to ensure they have plans, policies and resources in place. These are good steps and the right steps to take, but it's going to take more than that to stop this virus. It's gonna take changes in our personal behavior from all of us to re reduce and prevent the spread. Do not shake hands. Maintain a safe distance from other individuals at gatherings. Wash your hands frequently and avoid touching your face, eyes, nose, and mouth. If you're sick, stay home and avoid contact with individuals you know to be sick. Clean frequently touched surfaces and objects with disinfecting agents. We all play a role in preventing this disease. It's particularly harmful to seniors and citizens with compromised immune systems. So while it may not be particularly harmful to some of us, you could potentially be carrying something uh, that you could spread to a loved one that could actually end up killing them. Be cautious and take necessary preventive measures. Of course, if you feel you have, you may have coronavirus, especially if you've traveled to one of those affected countries or have been in close contact with someone who has, you can call the Duval County Department of Health at 904-255-1850. Symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And lastly, the best way to do it, to prepare is to stay informed. That's why we're here today. Stay up to date with the latest information from the Department of Health and the Center for Disease Control. Stay tuned to your local news. To assist, we've created a webpage at www.jacksready backslash virus that we're updating daily with the latest information and local impacts. With that, I'll take questions. There are a lot of cancellations today. Um, also, have you heard anything about schools? What's going to be happening? You didn't touch with Dr. Green. 
Dr. Green and I have talked a number of times the last few days, a couple of times today. They're, they're, they're here representing as well. Um, I know that she is in contact with superintendents around the state and with the governor's office, so they are uh, in a uniformed, single voice making assessments as we speak. Do we know how many people have been tested in this county and who's capable of administering those tests? Uh, the Department of Chief, the Department of Health is administering those tests. And there's Do, a couple testing companies that doctors can refer their... their, their so doctors can now refer, right. Yeah, I believe the president authorized the doctors to be able to refer that a couple of days ago. Do we know how many have been tested? I don't have that information. That, that's not been shared with me. Did you have that info? Department of Health. H here's what I'll tell the people of Jacksonville. As the Department of Health shares information with me, I will share it with you. We saw the Miami Herald report with uh, the Brazilian ambassador, how that Cecil filled at uh, Embraer. Embraer. Um, do you have a concern about that? Do you know what's happening with that? Are those people being tested? Or what's uh, our emergency operations center are in contact and taking necessary protocols. Again, if, if I were to learn that someone uh, was self-isolating as a as result of that interaction, I would share it with you like we did with our Jacksonville Fire Rescue personnel. At this moment, we don't have that information. Do you have a concern about what happened there? Tested positive? Uh, of course, Jim. This entire COVID-19 has me concerned, but what I can tell the people of Jacksonville is uh, we're prepared and, and we're going to share information as we get it. still part of a fluid conversation. But I can tell you all the people that I've talked to, uh, the superintendent, our agencies and our emergency operations center, uh, the hospital leads, um, uh, people are working on this, people are organized and they're being methodical and they're learning from what we've seen happen around the country. Uh, as recently as yesterday, my chief administrative officer was on the phone call with the White House about this while his deputy, I'm sorry, he was at an EOC meeting and his deputy was uh, on a phone call with the White House. When do you think those plans would need to be released? Again, that's right now the superintendent and the superintendents in all other 66 other counties and the governor's office are uh, collaborating. Uh, I'm getting information flow back from the superintendent and they'll make that decision with the data they have. They, that decision hasn't been made at this point. So at this, at this moment in time, um, uh, I know it's spring break for public schools now, but at this moment in time, uh, school goes back as scheduled. This is fluid, that could change, but they'll let us know. Some water companies across the country are suspending uh, shutoffs for people that uh, have non-payments yet. Is that something that the city is considering or looking into as well? Uh, that, is a, that is not a discussion that I've had at this point, but it is on my list to get our folks in our EOC to talk about when I saw those reports as well. We would have to be brought up in the next meeting that they have, and they'll, they'll be meeting in short order. So you got CBC with nobody going out to that. It's going to go on. The Michael Blay concert canceled or postponed. We have other events happening in the city as well, like Florida Theater, things like that. Would you suggest that they kind of just keep thinking twice about Well, that? Here's, here's what we're doing, Jim. We are uh, looking at an inventory of events that uh, in the city. And uh, it's fluid, but we are assessing uh, whether or not to cancel events. And as these events get closer, we'll be making a decision and sharing that with the public. At this point, uh, we haven't mandated that people not be out. Um, I think at this point, people need to use their own judgment, take the precautions on washing their hands and not touching their face and keeping distance and covering their mouth. Uh, but that inventory of events is happening and we'll make decisions uh, it literally in the days ahead as these events approach. Can you clarify in terms of the firefighters, were they cleared of the coronavirus or were they cleared of self-quarantine? They were, they were never tested. They were never tested because they, they did not meet the, the testing criteria, but the state looked at the people that needed to be isolated and about 1230 this afternoon, they notified us that those four no longer needed to be isolated. So are they returning to work? They're returning to work tomorrow morning. And this is what we encourage you know, the public to do as well. We, we were uh, operating out of an abundance of caution, self-isolating like we needed to, same thing we need the public to do. And now that this has been cleared, they're allowed to come back to work. An important thing, I mean, all this is incredibly important, but I, I wanna stress in my conversation with the hospital leadership this morning that uh, the virtual care as a starting point is pretty important. 
because uh, what you've seen happen in some other, other places that have dealt with this is hospitals have been inundated uh, with folks that uh, didn't need to be tested, that didn't really have the symptoms, and that puts uh, unnecessary stress on the, those uh, care systems. All right, thank you very much.